What is up, you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I'm Gold Pony. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the new 2020 Honda Ridgeline, courtesy of Heritage Honda in Westminster, Maryland. And so, it's been quite a while, really feels like forever since I've checked the Ridgeline out. It first came out in 2006. Super popular then, just like it still is now with its in-bed storage and its dual-purpose tailgate. So needless to say, I'm quite excited to be in this one yet again. So what do you guys say? As always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2020 Ridgeline. First one being the Sport, starting at $33,900. RTL for $36,670. RTL-E, which actually is the one we have today this one is going to start at forty two thousand twenty dollars and lastly the black edition which goes for forty three thousand five hundred and twenty dollars and as far as those trim levels go the first three of them actually come standard with front wheel drive you can add all wheel drive for two thousand one hundred and fifty dollars black edition comes standard with all wheel drive however so i do want to mention that as well but Regardless of trim level that you go with, power plant on the Ridgeline will be the same. Powering this beast is going to be a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6, putting out 280 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 262 pound-feet of torque available at 4,700 RPM. Power sent to front wheels or all wheels through a nine-speed automatic, which is new for the 2020 Ridgeline. Wanted to mention that to you guys with paddle shifters, so we will be testing those out in a little bit though. Zero to 60 time comes in at approximately 7.2 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 19 in the city, 26 highway for the front wheel drive, 19 city, 24 highway for the all wheel drive configuration. Did want to also mention though with those miles per gallon, there is a variable cylinder management system that comes with the Ridgeline. Essentially what that does is it shuts off two to three of the cylinders of the six cylinders when you're either cruising or decelerating like we are right now. So therefore that is going to make the Ridgeline much more fuel efficient in those particular instances at least. So that's kind of a cool thing as well. But so now before we do any kind of acceleration test or paddle shifter test, I did want to mention there are some drive modes available for the 2020 Ridgeline. And actually they're more along the lines of traction management modes, I guess you could say. They're going to include snow, sand, and mud. And that button is located just behind the drive button there in the center. That's going to adjust things like the shift points, throttle sensitivity, traction control system, and intelligent variable torque management system. And that's going to apply to all wheel drive models only, of course, but a torque management system essentially sends torque to the axle with the most traction at all four corners independently that is pretty cool so that's essentially going to give you the very best traction possible so that's a big win there but having said all of that what do you guys say let's go ahead and hit that drive mode one more time that kind of puts us in that sport mode and it did immediately downshift for me so it is holding the rpms at a much higher level giving more power on demand as we're trucking it up this hill so what do you guys say? let's go ahead and test out the paddle shifters and let's see how quickly they are going to react for us here, here we go All right, there's a little bit of a delay, but you know what? Who's gonna be using the paddle shifters in a ridge line? Anyways, they're really meant to be used for engine braking. So when it starts snowing out here in Maryland, you can use them as opposed to using the brakes when you're going down a steep hill like we are right now. So that's gonna assist you with not spinning out when you're going down a hill like that. So really that's probably what everyone's gonna be using those paddle shifters for anyways. But to take it out of that full manual shift mode, just press the drive mode again, and ridge line has full control once again. And so now, Having said that, let's let the Ridgeline do a quick little acceleration without us using the paddle shifters and let's see how quickly this naturally aspirated V6 here can get us up to speed. All right, hit three, two, one, go. Whoa, there it is. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you're not going to have any issues with marching onto the highway, that's for sure. Plenty of an acceleration. This is a larger truck, so really, 7.2 seconds, 0 to 60 isn't all that bad. So plenty of an acceleration for the Ridgeline. No issues for me. But, as always, to go along with that acceleration, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 12.6-inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 13-inch solid rear discs. As far as the braking feel goes, it's been perfectly fine for me today. No brake pedal delay or anything like that. 
Uh, touching on suspension and handling, up front you're going to get a McPherson strut front suspension with the stabilizer bar. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, once again with the stabilizer bar. Again, you got that variable torque management system, which honestly is going to contribute to traction and handling the very most. So, absolutely love that Honda put that on the ridge line. But overall, as far as ride quality goes, it's been perfectly fine for me today. Sometimes with trucks, you wonder because the saying goes, it rides like a truck. This kind of rides like an SUV. So, certainly no issues with with ride quality in the ridge line. As far as the steering feel goes, it's pretty much as expected. It does have a nice little bit of a heavier weight to it. So it's not a loosey goosey steering feel, which I absolutely love. Sometimes with SUVs and trucks, you do tend to have a little looser of a steering feel. So I did wanted to mention that it does feel good here in the ridge line. As far as cabin noise goes, I have the climate control on, but other than that, it's been perfectly quiet for me today. So absolutely no issues there either. And touching on visibility, I honestly could see perfectly fine out the back. Typically with trucks, you're not gonna have any issues there. So I absolutely love that, no issues for me there. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2020 Honda Ridgeline. All right, here she is, you guys, the 2020 Honda Ridgeline finished in obsidian blue pearl case anybody was curious there but let's go ahead and start up front on this one to the sides multi-reflector halogen headlights come standard with the sport and rtl trim levels they will of course come with the automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark out at night they do turn on automatically for you there one less thing you got to worry about there daytime running lights also coming standard did want to mention though if you go with the rtl e like we have today or black edition trims you will find led low beam headlights up front so a little better illumination for either of those two trim levels and just below it all you do have fog lights for all trim levels across the board so that's always a big plus too and make your way to the side of the ridge line black window surrounds coming with the sport and black edition trim levels chrome window surrounds coming with the rtl trim levels of course body colored power adjustable side mirrors come standard across the board they will be heated for the rtl trim level and up and you will actually get memory settings for those side mirrors as well as the seats of course but that comes with the rtl e like we have today or black edition trim levels did want to also mention though to go with the window surrounds the door handles kind of tie together with that body colored door handles come with all trims but the rtl e that we have today because you are looking at chrome door handles of course and again they are specific just to the rtl e trim level and take a look down at the wheel setup 18 inch gray painted alloy wheels come with the sport and rtl e 18 inch machine finished alloys coming with the rtl and 18 inch black painted alloys coming with the black edition trim level of course and make your way to the back of the ridge line center high mount stop lamp comes standard led tail lights actually also standard for every single trim level i love that tow hook with the seven pin connector also coming standard down below there and by the way when it comes to the towing capacity 5,000 pounds for the all-wheel drive configuration 3,500 pounds for the front wheel drive in case anybody was curious there but just below it all though single exhaust out it tucked away so you guys know what we always have to do as always here is that exhaust clip Alright, so now since we are around back, this is the fun part, you guys. How to open that rear tailgate. And so like I was saying, it is a dual action tailgate, meaning you can open it up in the traditional way, meaning you just pull down from the top there, and that's going to be your traditional way of opening that rear tailgate. However, there is another way that really makes the ridge line unique, found in the lower right-hand corner of that rear tailgate, and that is yet another way to open up that rear tailgate. So it serves different purposes depending upon what you're going to need it for. So I absolutely love that. But once opened up, as far as that bed length goes, it comes in at 64 inches or five feet, four inches. Payload capacity comes in at 1500 pounds in case you were thinking of putting an ATV or something back there. And again, once you have everything opened up, there is an in-bed trunk. This is yet another unique feature of the ridge line that I absolutely love. And so as far as the in-bed trunk volume goes, that comes in at 7.3 cubic feet there's actually a plug at the bottom as well and the reason honda put the plug at the bottom of that in-bed trunk is they figured people would be using that for tailgating so next time you go perhaps to a ravens game and you take the ridge line you fill it up with ice back there and all kinds of drinks or whatever then once the ice melts you're not left with a bed full of water you could simply just 
undo the plug and it is going to empty out below the truck. That is absolutely wonderful. I still love that feature to this day. So that is one of the coolest things about the Ridgeline, but it gets better. Let me tell you guys, InBed audio system is going to come with the RTLE and black edition trim levels. That gives you 400 watts, again, for ultimate tailgating. I absolutely love that. You can hook up Pandora to the InBed audio system, or even better, you can hook up a TV once you're parked, of course, and you already have the speakers wired in back there for you. So yet another extremely cool feature. This is really the ultimate tailgate vehicle if you're a football fan or whatever you want to use it for, quite honestly. But I absolutely love that. Eight tie down cleats come standard for all trim levels. You do have bed lining back there, again, for all trim levels across the board. So ultimately, absolutely wonderful place to be there in that rear tailgate. But making our way to the rear legroom, that comes in at 36.7 inches. So for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Rear passengers will also find rear ventilation for all trims. There is a rear center armrest with cup holders as well. And there is a power sliding rear window for the RTL trim level and up. That is how you're going to be able to go about getting that one. Did want to also mention though, in typical truck fashion, those rear seats do fold up. So if you had a Great Dane or a Mastiff, a little extra space for them back there. So there is some under seat storage, if not in use. And of course you could fold it back down. There's nice little handles on the side of the seat. So it does make it super easy to fold those rear seats up and then fold them back down. So I love that as well. Then make our way to the front seats. Manually adjustable cloth seating comes with the Sport. 10-way power adjustable driver seat with the RTL trim level and up four-way power adjustable passenger seat comes standard with that leather finishes come standard heated front seats come standard a lot of standard seating features on the ridge line i absolutely love that memory settings for up to two different drivers are going to come with the rtl e and black edition trim levels and overall in my short test drive today seats have been perfectly comfy for me shouldn't have any issues with taking the ridge line on a long road trip or anything like that but taking a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped for the rtl trim level and up and it will actually come heated for the RTL E and black edition trim levels. Then take a look at the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Honda logo on the one side and when you flip it around, lock, unlock, and that circular button that says hold, that is going to be your remote start that actually comes standard on all trim levels across the board. Well done Honda for that as well. Also, all trim levels will get a push button start. So all I'm going to do to start this one up actually is simply just put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just to the left of the climate control settings there. And so, but then once started up, tachometer is on your left, digital speedometer front and center to the very top there, that's pretty cool. And there is a digital display just below that giving you a ton of different information you could check out like trip A, trip B of course. Also your oil life meter, that's gonna tell you when you need your next oil change. Always love the way Honda did that. Tire pressure for each individual tire. There's a compass up there, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. So really just about everything you would want to see up on the gauges there. And take a look at overall interior quality. There is a power moonroof for the RTL trim level and up. Sunglass holder can be found on the roof there as well. And that's all trim levels will get that. Tri-zone climate control for all trims as well, meaning driver, passenger, and rear passengers can each set their own temperature. That's pretty cool. Home link controls are going to come standard again for all trim levels across across the board, absolutely love that. Ambient LED lighting is gonna come with the RTL E and black edition trim levels. And the interesting part about that ambient lighting, it's gonna be preset to one color. For the RTL E, you're gonna get blue. For the black edition, you're gonna get red. And in my personal opinion, maybe a little constructive criticism there, I think Honda should probably set a bunch of different colors that people can choose from perhaps instead of setting one particular color just for those two trim levels. But that's just me maybe. But overall interior quality is just fine. I like this piano black finish that goes on the doors as well as just above the glove box there. It's also just around the cup holders here and all the drive buttons. 12 volt power outlet up front. You have a USB charging port, a little storage area just below that with a rubberized bottom so things don't slide around. Massive center storage area just behind the cup holders there with a little tray in there as well. But overall interior quality has been just fine for me. So no issues there. But let's now make our way to the tech display. Eight inch colored touchscreen display comes standard across the board. Bluetooth audio streaming coming standard, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay for all trim levels once again, love that. 
factory navigation system. It's going to come standard with the RTLE and Black Edition. However, don't really need it these days if you have a smartphone because of the Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, but either way, it's there for you. Of course, you can check out your radio information up there as well. And by the way, when it comes to the sound system for the Sport and RTL trims, you get seven speakers with a subwoofer actually and 200 watts. For the RTLE and Black Edition trims, you get eight speakers with a subwoofer and 540 watts. So, Having said that, you guys, I think you guys know what time it is here. Let's turn on the radio, see what we got playing this morning, and let's test out the clarity of this one. Dang, plenty of a sound system for the Ridgeline. That bass was ridiculous. You can most definitely tell there is a subwoofer in the Ridgeline. That was, that was quite impressive, actually, so... Well done, Honda, for that. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display, at least, is when you do put the ridge line in reverse, you, of course, will find a rear view camera with dynamic grid lines letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. That's the first thing I wanted to mention when it comes to safety. Another major change for the 2020 ridge line compared to the 2019 Honda Sensing now coming standard for every single trim level across the board. Honda Sensing in 2019 just came with the RTLE and Black Edition, but for 2020, even the Sport has got Honda Sensing, so I absolutely love that. And essentially what that is, that includes collision mitigation braking system, road departure mitigation system, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist is another big one, forward collision warning, and lane departure warning as well. Again, standard across the board. Gotta love that. Safety for everyone, right? Front side, side curtain airbags come standard. Latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats in the back seat there. Rear child door locks, higher pressure monitoring system. And I did want to also add RTLE and black edition trims also are going to give you a blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert and automatic high beams. And so as far as my final thoughts go on the Ridge line, if you are into tailgating, if you are a hardcore football fan, perhaps hardcore Ravens fan, there is no better pick for tailgating than the Ridge line. I guarantee you what other truck has embed storage specifically for drinks, for tailgating, what other truck has speakers built into the tailgate area where you can actually set up a TV that works through those speakers for the pregame. It's absolutely amazing. Every diehard football fan should have the Ridge Line. So if that includes you, this is definitely the pick for you. But absolutely also love that Honda Sensing is now included with all trim levels for the 2020 Ridge Line as well. So if you were thinking 2019 versus 2020 and safety is important to you, obviously go with the 2020 Ridge Line. Overall, plenty of very important changes, including that new transmission for the 2020 Ridge Line that definitely make, in my opinion, this one worth buying over the 2019. That's just my personal opinion but let me know what you guys think of the ridge line in the comments section below that is about it for this one feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold